Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Javier Marcos, and this is my colleague uh, Juan Galeana. We both work as pen testers for IBM, and uh, we, our talk is, uh, the title is Pwning Internets with HTML5. Uh, basically, what uh, we are going to present is, uh, this is the agenda for the, for the, for the presentation, how the attack works, uh, what we are, or how we are going to discover stuff in your, in your network, uh, what try type of information and what resources are we are going to extract from your infrastructure. Uh, we are going to uh, draw some diagrams that your network uh, administrator will ask them for us, will ask us for them. Uh, we are going to, once we have located stuff in your internet, we want to uh, access that, uh, those, those machines and we are going to uh, exploit some, some, uh, some services there and we are going to show you the demo. And then we're going to uh, some conclusions. If you have any questions, just jump in and we, we try to answer them. So basically, uh, how, the, how the attack works. Um, well, uh, let's start off with the diagram of what we are trying to do. Uh, just uh, this guy here. Oops. This guy here want to extract information from this secure internet which are some uh, clients connected to that uh, secure internet. And he's going to force uh, those clients to uh, visit some web websites that he controls to run some code. And with that code that will run within the internet, he will be able to um, uh, work around the firewall, IDS, IPS, all the passive uh, uh, detection systems that can be in the internet because the internet is secure, isn't it? And so he is going to do th uh, that through the internet. So this is basically the, the idea of, of this presentation. How we are going to do that? Let's start off with uh, what's HTML5. Everyone is talking about HTML5. So well, this is some of the reasons that why you would use HTML5 on, of, or any other users uh, want to use HTML5. It's, uh, it has backwards compatibility with, with HTML4. Uh, it's just a new set of uh, new tags. Uh, some tags are deprecated. Uh, new tags in, new tags out, uh, with uh, new additions in JavaScript, new APIs, and new uh, CSS content. It has also new uh, cool features like Canvas, WebGL, geolocation, uh, native media support. You you will you won't have to use uh, anymore the Flash plugin. And then you will you can access the other domains. Uh, from a different domain uh, using the cross uh, resource sharing uh, requests, also known as cores. And what well, you will have to eventually, because the modern browsers now they are shipping their own their browsers with uh, with support on them. And this is the futures of uh, HTML5 that we what we want to focus on. Um, we want to use WebSockets, cores. We want to use uh, web workers to parallelize some JavaScript code, and we are we want to. Uh, run uh, with using the new uh, features of the uh, JavaScript APIs. Now what we have uh, HTML5 as, as base of the attack, we are going to focus on Beef. Any, any, of, uh, any of you know of Beef? Well, ba Beef is uh, like, uh, it stands for Browser Exploitation Framework. It's a very nice way to uh, scare thing to, to scare developers when uh, you tell them, you have a cross-site scripting. And they say, yeah, it's an annoying pop-up, but, but well, what can happen? Then you show them what can you do with beef. Uh, it's it's you can do really cool things. It works as a common uh, and control center for uh, hooked browsers. The browser acts like uh, the zombie of a botnet, and uh, with uh, beef you can run code on that machine. Uh, it has a se uh, uh, several uh, modules to to run stuff, and uh, you can uh, extract information from the browser. You basically you control uh, the the browser of the victim. And uh, we are going to uh, focus on this. It was uh, the first version of that was developed by Wade Alcorn, 2005. It was developed uh, using JavaScript and PHP. The new version is written in Ruby, and uh, the modules are written basically in JavaScript. Now we have HTML5 and then Beef. What, how we are going to kick off the attack? Well, what we want to do is just uh, spot uh, a person that has access to the internet that is connected in the internet. And then we are going to force him to visit a website that we control, uh, that we can just run our code, that, or we can just use a, a phishing attack to do that, can do some social engineering and know which forums the guy visits while he's in the office. We can uh, kick off the attack from there, or we can use uh, URL shorteners 
uh, that is in Twitter, Facebook, any social um, media or social engineering techniques can, can work for this. The, the, the point here is to, to make the guy who is within the internet run the code that we, we control. And we are going to use BIF as the common control uh, center for that. And the, all the tools that we wrote for this, uh, they, are, uh, be in, in they are part of BIF already as modules. You can grab them in the next re release, which will be the 10th of November. And well, those modules will uh, run with uh, HTML5. And now, what now we've, we've, we decided which, uh, which tool set are we going to uh, use? What, what, can we, what can we do? Uh, well, if okay. So, well, uh, we're going to use, uh, int well, it works, yeah. Uh, internet footprinting that basically is um, get as much information as you can uh, um, about a network. So we want to know, uh, in we, want we want to locate the network range uh, to what the big team is connected to. So once we have the that network range, we will identify the ac active uh, machines on the network and the internal host names. Then uh, we want to extract information about these uh, machines. So we will discover the open ports to map them to the service running. And we'll uh, try to do a basic uh, operating system uh, fingerprinting and then create a graphic and map the, the network. So well, for that, we are going to use BIF, uh, the browser exploitation framework. BIF has two main uh, components, uh, the server side that is written in Ruby and the client side that is run it runs in the big team and well it's basically a set of modules here we have an image that we can see the the list of hook browsers with a quick look we can see that we have a big team and it's running firefox with uh, uh, linux well it's kind of a control panel to manage hook browsers so well it comes out of the box with a set of modules uh, we can see there the module tree, so we have different categories, like exploits, the metasploit uh, integration, network, browser, and other categories. Uh, well, you can as well develop your own module. So, well, each module has three files. Uh, the first one is a config file in which we set the name, the category, and, uh, well, basically the configuration of for that module, the browsers in which that module runs, the second one is a Ruby file. Uh, we have to define there um, the parameters for that module. Uh, well it's an important file because the core and uh, the server needs that file to, to run. And then the, the last file is the, the JavaScript, the JavaScript code, in which we can use all the <coughs> features of HTML5, and it's the code that is going to run into the victim browser. So that is the important part. So first of all, um, there is a module <coughs> called Discover Internal Network that we can use to get the internal I IP address of a victim. So if we run that module, it uses JavaScript to get the internal IP address. And we can get, uh, here on the bottom, we can see an image that the module returns uh, the internal IP address of that victim. Another module we developed was is the ping module. So well, <coughs> this is uh, like the ping command developed in JavaScript. We are going to see now how it works. We can define um, IP address. Here we have a couple of examples. It will return if the if machine is alive or not. Well, it, uh, there we have the module tree. So it's depending on the <coughs> network category. Well, it works uh, calling from JavaScript to a Java static method, but uh, it uh, do not require user interaction. So normally, when we, <coughs> when we have to run Java code in a browser, like an applet, we need the user to accept that uh, he wants to run the applet. But in this case, <coughs> as it's a Java static method, uh, the user interaction is not required. So we can run that code, and this code will run in the victim browser without any pop-up or other. 
<coughs> so here we can see that we not only can specify um, all a single machine, we can as well give a range. So we can scan a whole classy network. In this example, so in the image, we can see that the, the module will return all these ma active machines in the in the network. <coughs> there is another model called intranet footprinting that is, uh, tries to discover web servers in the board 80 or 8080. So that module scans for Apache, IIS, and known routers and printers. Well, when we do our HTTP request from a browser, if it's cross domain, we can't read the response. So how it works is <coughs> it tries to, to load an image, and then handling the unload, unload event, it checks the size of that image. So the, mo the module has a database with known images and the sizes and then checks for that size, and if it's the same, so uh, <coughs> it knows that it's, for example, Apache 2, because that image was only in Apache 2. Um, <coughs> but, well, if we try to scan all the possible sub-networks, that's not practical. We need a lot of time. So <coughs> what happens if we have an interesting host in a random IP address? For example, a uh, known host like intranet.company.com. If we try to, to scan every subnetwork, we can't uh, guess that is in that IP range. So we're going to use a different approach here. We're going to use uh, <coughs> DNS enumeration. Well, DNS enumeration is a known technique that is around for a while. And well, it's based on two key ideas. Uh, the, the first one is that most of the important servers have a DNS associated to them. And well, the second one, and the most important, is that if we try to resolve, for example, the internet in a web browser, the web browser will append company.com because the, the configuration of the DNS tools. <coughs> so well, we have a problem that in JavaScript we cannot resolve uh, DNS entries. But we can try to make cross a domain request um, with cross origin resource sharing or web sockets. And we'll uh, have, have a look to the time that the request times, uh, takes to come back. And depending on the time, we can see if that host exists or not. So well, for example, we can try to resolve known <coughs> hosts like FTP, intranet, a web server or something like that. So we define a dictionary that, well, in that case, the tool um, has one by default, but you can uh, provide a, another one. So the, the web browser starts to try every web, every hostname and will get the list of the ones that takes more time to, to resolve. So that means that the, the host exists. And well, that command will come back with a list of all the host names. So well, now that we know which machines are alive, uh, doing a ping sweep or doing DNS enumeration techniques, we are going to try to extract more information about this host. So the next step is uh, try to see which ports are open in those uh, host names. So now you, you know we, uh, which machines are alive in the network. And even if the, you, you didn't figure out what was the IP, but you know that that machine, because of the name, is there. So now let's try to uh, scan what ports those machines have open. It's the port scanning is uh, kind of uh, looking at uh, what a building, what's the purpose of a building looking at the door. If you see a very secure door in a bank, probably it, well something is very secure in there. So it's the, the, the door should be uh, secure enough. So it's something like that. Uh, the most known uh, port scanner is Nmap. And Nmap is a great tool to run when you are within the network. But when you are outside of the network, it w we are trying to kick off this attack in a, <coughs> in a secure internet. So Nmap is not, a, is not an option. 
So uh, we want to uh, get some uh, basic information, like uh, basic uh, OS fingerprinting or service proving to see which services are running in those machines. We are going to, to use this. Uh, sometimes uh, when you find a port that appears to be open, it's filtered, that's also some information. means that something interesting is there. A firewall can be protecting that, so it's, it's also information even if you, if you cannot access it. So it's also no to good to know. And uh, well, the, 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 the point here is to get uh, as much information as you can. And then later on, you can analyze that information and see which ways you can take to, to kick off the attack. Uh, the, 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 the interesting thing here is uh, most of the internets, uh, they are not filtered because they are running tests, they are developers running code, they are performance tests, they are reliability testing going on. So if, if you start uh, deploying firewalls or IDS, then they, they will have start having performance issues. So most of the internet, they are not filtered. That's, that's good for us because it means that uh, we won't have any problems and anything uh, stopping or request. And this is just uh, playing HTTP uh, traffic. So it's good to discover services that uh, are there and then if you want to kick off an APT then you, you have uh, that information. The basic uh, port scanning we implemented uh, will tell you is uh, the port is either open or closed. You can uh, enable a more verbose mode uh, know, knowing if uh, that the port is uh, filtered or it took uh, too long to discover but uh, that's uh, you, you, can, you can do that. And we are taking the three different approaches to uh, scan the ports. Uh, we are uh, using the, cla cla the classic approach, uh, which is uh, using uh, um, image and iframe uh, tags. Using the source uh, attribute, you can, uh, you can specify uh, which IP and which port you can, uh, you can load the resource from. Um, th that's uh, complemented with JavaScript. You can um, uh, process all the requests based on the its timing. The, the, the whole thing is, is based on time, so based on the events uh, on on load and on error, then you can figure out things. Uh, then the HTML5 approach, it's using cores and web sockets, which uh, will let you uh, do basically the same uh, with JavaScript as well to handle all the events. Um, there are some problems uh, to these approaches because, well, web sockets and cores, they, they, they took some, uh, th some things into consideration when designed uh, the thing, so there are some security measures for that. So it if you try to uh, to load a known port like SSH 22, it will tell you no, you cannot access that because I'm pretty sure that there is no uh, thing there that you are looking for. So it's it's blocked, and in Firefox as well, natively can block you uh, to do that. But that's not a problem because it was uh, discovered, or that it was uh, uh, explained by Jeremy Grossman back in 2005 using a different protocol than HTTP. Then you can. Uh, work around this protection, and uh, the in using Wireshark to see how the the port scanning we are running looks like it's exactly as the Nmap uh, TCP scan, which is the uh, simplest scan you can run in in, in Nmap. So here, as you can see, there's um, you can you will have that uh, that image uh, in Firefox if you try to load the 22 port, which is known to be for a different service, using the HTTP. Uh, colon slash slash uh, IP or hostname colon 22. Uh, WebSockets and cores will raise an exception and won't let you uh, load that content. But if you use uh, FTP, then you got it and you can uh, still access that. Seen, I think if it was still Firefox 3.6, it let you to use the protocol Gopter, which now is no longer supported. But um, it works really well in the Internet Explorer, uh, Firefox, Google Chrome, and Safari. And as I said, it's, it's based on timeouts. Uh, we, we provide uh, the values for a uh, uh, normal intranet that uh, they work out of the box in different browsers, but you can configure those for your own uh, intranet. So this is how the, the, the module looks like. It will be under the network category, and then you can provide the scan, uh, the, the IP to scan or hostname. Then you can provide the, the specific port to scan. If you put the default string, it will it will take a default list of ports of 180 ports, start taking from the most used ports that uh, Nmap uses. Uh, it's also um, correlated with a list of uh, known services for those ports. So it will, if the the port is mapped to a known service, it will tell you as well. And um, 
then you can configure the timing for the the what's what to expect for a closed port, what to expect for an open port, and then what to expect uh, what what time to uh, specify between requests because uh, you don't want to run all all of them at the same time. It will maybe it it will uh, raise some suspicions. Uh, the default list of the ports, uh, which is 180 ports, will take to scan uh, around five minutes. So uh, it's not too bad. And uh, if you provide, if you put your script in a website which uh, runs a, a video, for example, Nyan Cut is great because it lasts like seven minutes. So uh, it, while the, the person is watching at that video, then you can start, uh, you can run your scans in the background, and it really, it really works well. So uh, now we have which machines uh, we have connected, which uh, other machines are connected as well, and we, we discover them by domain, and which ports they have open. Now we want to put them together and then really uh, provide this uh, diagram to uh, the, the well, some, pers some people, the project managers mostly, they don't want to see a list of numbers and names, so you, they want something graphic, some eye candy, to see in a, qui in a quick look how uh, how to how to see what's uh, what's going on in the scan so this we just uh, did this to just to make just just to make good to look good and um, it's uh, it's also based on the port patterns uh, it's on a basic os uh, fingerprinting as well for example if the port is 22 is detected as open it's most likely that that would that would be a, a linux box and if the a remote desktop is open that would be most likely a, a windows box and, and so on so this is how it looks it's uh, not too bad. Like, uh, well, this is all based in with uh, JavaScript and CSS, so it can be uh, embedded in any websites or beef as well as common control. So now we have located uh, the machines that are alive, uh, the ports, the services that are running. Now we want to uh, start uh, having serious fun here. So we want to uh, communicate <coughs> with that and start exploiting things. Okay. So well. Until here, we e extract enough information about the internet. Uh, but well, we got the active machines, ports, service running, and now we are going to show a, a technique cool that is inter-protocol. That, that technique um, permit us to launch HTTP request from a web browser, but to non-HTTP web service. Well, non-HTTP um, services. So how we are going to do that? Uh, well, playing with post forms. So well, when we create a post form, the encoding type is uh, by default URL encoded. But there are a few others like plain text or multipart from data. Multipart multi from data is the encoding type used for file uploading. So well, we can put whatever we want there. Uh, so we are going to launch a request from the browser to uh, our service, and the service will ignore the lines like the HTTP headers, but will execute the commands that they understand. So we are going to put an example here. Like, well, this um, uh, let's imagine we have an IRC server, and we create we put in the post payload IRC commands. So if I am talking here about IRC. That can be whatever other protocol we want. So well, the server, well, I removed the part of the HTTP headers. Here we can see two of them. So the server, depends on the implementation and the toler tolerance, uh, will ignore that HTTP headers. But then it starts, well, it starts to, proce to proceed each line. But when it arrives to the IRC commands, the IRC server will start to execute that commands. So it says that we are going to change our nick, we are going to jo join a channel, and then send a message to that channel. Well, I'm not going to give more details here because we are going to show that in, a, in the demo later. But we not only can communicate with non HTTP <coughs> services, we as well can try to exploit them. So as we have seen before, we can try to recognize if we are in front of a Apache server, and we can do uh, a port scanning. So we can map that ports to know what services are running. So if, for example, we discover an, an asterisk or 
another type of service, and we have a list of known, known uh, vulnerabilities, we can try to send them to the service to see if the vulnerability uh, triggers. So, well, the idea here is uh, we can see better with the diagram. So, well, the attacker um, ha no, uh, doesn't have access to the server directly because it's in the internet, but it controls a website that the client is um, browsing. So, it can control the, the browser of that victim. The attacker forces the victim to launch a request to the, <coughs> to the server with the payload. And if the vulnerability triggers in the server, it will execute the shellcode there. And the shellcode, the shellcode can be whatever the attacker wants. If it's a backconnect shell, when the vulnerability triggers there, the backconnect shell will connect to the attacker, and the attacker will have full control over the server and over the intranet. So that's the idea behind that. that. And well, there are a couple of uh, <coughs> working exploits. One of them uh, developed by Wade Alcorn uh, with <coughs> with an um, asterisk server. And well, it's quite cool that um, he can exploit and get executed a, a shellcode uh, in the asterisk server that is not talking HTTP. So well, now it's time for a demo. Okay, so uh, here we're launching <coughs> launching Beef, the browser exploitation framework. Uh, well, Beef provides with the URL of the admin panel. So well, this is the admin panel. This is the the website that the attackers uh, will see. Here on the on the left will appear the the victims. Now we are going to open a basic demo. This tab uh, <coughs> acts as the window of the victim. So in the admin panel will appear a new victim in a few seconds. There we go. So well, um, here we can see the information about the victim. Well, the <coughs> we can see the well the operating system and the browser. We can see as well the, the plugins that the, that browser has, the internal IP address as well. If it has Java enabled, Flash, WebSocket support. Well, this is an, a second victim that we connect that is running Safari in Mac. And well, the same approach, we can get the information about that victim. Well, so same as the other, like the browser. Plugins, screen size, has Java enabled, and so on. So, well, uh, if we go to the tab commands, here we have all those modules we were talking about. Uh, they are split in <coughs> different categories the, the browser one, <coughs> the host internet protocol category, the integration with Metasploit, that, well, it's being developed right now. Network category, the well, the has a category for persistence. Few modules to try to uh, force the victim connected, and well, for each, yeah. Well, uh, if the module has the green color, it means that is supported by in this browser, and if it's red, means that it's not supported, or well, requ requires user interaction. So for, for each victim, we have a tab there. So we can control individual victims and we'll launch commands to them. So we're going to show the, the Network Reconnaissance Toolkit. So well, first of all, this is the discovery internal IP address. So well, we send that command to the victim. The victim executes the JavaScript code and then returns back that string to the to the admin panel. So here we have uh, the IP address in, the, in this case. Uh, we are running in the same machine, but uh, will appear the, the IP address of the victim. 
Then we can try to run the pin sweep uh, module. For that, we need to to know before the in which network is the victim. So we we set, uh, for example, 50 machines, and then just hit uh, execute. And well, if we wait a couple of seconds, we start to receive the the hosts that are alive. So here's the list. <coughs> now um, we are going to run the um, the DNS enumeration module. So uh, the module comes with a um, default dictionary of host names, but you can provide uh, whatever you you want. So uh, same idea. It takes a while to to launch the 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 command, but well, in a while we start to receive that DNS entries that are in the internet of the victim. So well, now well, if we come back to the to the ping sweep command, we can get the the full list of the hosts that are alive. So we're going to pick like well the this one machine, and we're going to see. Uh, to, to run a port scanning on that. Okay, so now in the port scanning thing, you, you provide the IP, the list of ports. Uh, well, I'm going to remove the default one. I'm going to provide just a list of, of, of ports to I want to scan in that machine. Then the timing that I will leave as uh, the default values. And it works. Well, it, uh, it, it will run in the, in the victim. Uh, so I will start getting what's uh, what's uh, where those values. It's important to know that um, the method we are using here is being seen in other other tools presented in other conferences, like for GS Recon, uh, which was uh, performing a WebSocket port scanner. But uh, those tools were using only the WebSockets method or the course method. Uh, we are using the three of them combined. For example, uh, sometimes uh, the WebSockets uh, results are not very reliable, and then you want to to use another technique to double check that. So we are using these three methods to, to check that really uh, that port is open. Or sometimes the classic approach will tell you that that port is open. Then if you run the WebSockets, uh, it will tell you that that port is filtered because it can you can access it. It's, it's a bit more accurate. So that's, that's, that's interesting. And uh, it, will, it will give you a bit more of information. Which is, uh, well, as you can see, the, it gives you the, the service, which is uh, if, if it's port 22, it's no, it's sort of 21. So now we know that uh, we have a set of machines, a number of machines that are alive with a few ports open and, uh, and other machines that we want to just uh, show them in the, in the nice diagram that I was talking before. So this is that uh, you can uh, embed the, the diagram there and then just put that in your report for your pen test, which is it's not too bad. Like you can just. Uh, uh, move it around and then make it look as, as you like, just a, a bit of eye candy. And yeah, as you can see, you can see different icons. That uh, was because of the, um, the ports, uh, the OS uh, basic fingerprinting, if uh, the TUX uh, displays, because the 22 is, uh, is there uh, as, as, as open. So uh, that's the, the basic OS uh, fingerprinting that uh, you can uh, just see with, uh, with this diagram. And well, well, those were the tools that we uh, developed as modules of beef uh, for the for the for the mapping stuff in the intranet. And now I'm going to show you the how the the inter protocol looks like. Uh, just uh, sending some commands to the IRC. We we picked up the IRC protocol, uh, but uh, we checked that the other protocols depending how is the configuration of the server and how is the What's the what? Uh, how many commands, uh, wrong commands will allow? Uh, FTP lets you uh, uh, run these things, and some MTP as well, but it ha will have to be in a non-standard port. And uh, there's few uh, um, protocols that will swallow all that, uh, all the headers. So which is good. And now we just provided the 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 channel that we want to send the message the type of message uh, and then we just connect it using IRC uh, to uh, that server to see if uh, uh, the thing works and the the big thing will connect and it's that thing is really cool because you can use uh, well it's been used in uh, with some botnets IRC to control uh, which big teams they have hooked and as you can see it connects and it sends a message so, so you already know that that guy 
uh, is being uh, uh, hooked into the into the thing and well this is pretty much it it's it's all the build on the beef you can just uh, get the code and uh, try it yourself uh, it's, it will be in the next table which the code freeze is the 3rd of November so it's uh, 10th of November the release and just download it and if you don't like it or if you don't uh, if it doesn't work just give us a shout and we'll probably fix it um, uh, beef is uh, quite an uh, interesting tool and uh, very nice because it already provides you us uh, with a command control thing, and you can extend it. And uh, it's uh, it's it's okay, and it has a very long set of modules that are already implemented. And with the Metasploit integration, it's quite a powerful tool. And uh, well, uh, the good thing is that uh, all this thing runs in the background of a website, and it's just JavaScript. So no uh, antivirus or IDS or anything will raise any alarms. Uh, it's being um, already, there's some concerns of sysadmin that we know that's like, well, can we filter this? Can we add uh, rules to that? And uh, yes, you can uh, because, well, the, the client connects to the beef, not the beef connects back to the client. You can still catch some traffic coming back from there, but we already are working on some uh, obfuscation tools to make the, the code to not be recognized by, uh, by rules or not be recognized as uh, the server, so make it look like a harmless uh, Apache server that is giving you some uh, some information and, uh, well, just uh, run the command to redirect the user to the to the URL and, well, uh, okay. Okay, some conclusions. Well, um, the intranet starts mean to be secure, but uh, uh, most of most of the time, the companies rely on uh, the firewalls that protect the internet. But uh, uh, they give access to everyone who is connected to the internet uh, to win to the whole internet, so they can access uh, forums that they are members, or Facebook, or Twitter, or Google account, or anything. So uh, any person can be picked up and make them run code in their browsers. Uh, you can also communicate with the machines that are within that. And uh, well, we found that. Uh, one way good way to protect is just running no scripts in your in your Firefox to allow uh, not allow any uh, not known JavaScript code to run in your browser. But that was the only way we found that these things can be stopped. Um, this is the new features of HTML5. So well, it, uh, we 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 really like to abuse them, and uh, well, they're trying to push these things forward without checking the what's the consequences. But that's good fun. And uh, in my opinion, the browser should block these kind of requests, but you know sometimes they don't uh, they don't care and well um that was it uh here you have four uh, Twitter handles, so if you have any questions, give us a shout or any any anyone has a question yeah yeah. Like the kind of kind of having a distributed uh, thing to share the session between with uh, between different uh, things. Kind of the, the IP is the same and the this is one of the things that we we will have to look after. It's in the to in the to do list using web workers to parallelize the requests. So instead of relying only on one uh, website that is infected, just uh, try to break it up and then send it in different uh, many times and. You can do that, but at the moment it's only relies on if you have the tab open or the window, then it will run. If the guy leaves, obviously it's the connection is lost. But uh, there are some modules on Beef uh, to pers uh, make the attack persistence, like uh, hiding the attack, the the thing in a in a hidden uh, iframe, or uh, kind of uh, do tap nabbing or click jacking to just to trick the user into he doesn't know really what's going on. But uh, yeah, that uh, one of the things that uh, we are looking into to implement. There's another question here, yeah. Twenty-five? No, it's blocked. Twenty-five is blocked, and uh, uh, that's very blocked. <laughs> that's not easy to work around. Uh, you can, for example, uh, work around the limit, the, the limit of the. 
uh, 22, but uh, the 25 seems to be blocked everywhere because of the span issues. So yeah. if uh, SMTP protocol will swallow the inter-protocol thing, but if it's configuring a non-standard port. Yeah. Uh, that was the only one that we couldn't uh, work around. The others, uh, there's a long, s uh, if you go to the, um, well, the, the port scanning have a list of ports. Uh, we just found them uh, brute forcing. We, we have like, uh, we put from zero to uh, 65, five, three, th the, the maximum number of ports you, uh, you can configure. And we just uh, checked what the response was. And that's the list of blocked ports we know they are for web sockets and cores. Uh, then Firefox is a different story because the block is nati nat uh, natively, so it's uh, smaller. But still, we are taking the biggest one <coughs> because uh, then if it's blocked, we notify that the port is blocked. But still, even if the port is blocked for web sockets and cores, you can still run the the classic approach. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, based uh, on the, obviously you cannot check the response, but uh, just if you have the timing event saying the error was raised because the resource was not loaded, then you know that uh, the connection was not made. So that's a closed port. And then if the connection attempt, uh, was opened, then uh, there, is done this, there is no question because the, the protocol can't uh, st stay the communication open. Uh, it can close the connection, but it, the protocol won't miss much. So the communication will stay open. But you can then control that using web sockets and cores. No, no, it's uh, because it won't connect to FTP, the protocol. If, it, uh, if he wants to connect to FTP, then the protocol will match, and then it will ask the user. But this time, is you are loading an image, which uh, will l send you into a resource that is uh, the image, which will either try to load it or not. If it loads, then uh, it will, then you can uh, capture the event for open port, and if the port is open, if it doesn't, then it's an error, and then you can capture that as uh, closed. So, no problem. Any other questions? Well, we'll be around, so if you have any other questions and or anything, just give us a shout. All right? Thank you. Thank you.